Good day, my dear learners. I am Teacher Lirio D. Ariate, and I will be your teacher for today's science virtual class. I know that you miss having a class with your classmates and lesson. That's why we will bring our school on air in Science 7. This episode will be streamed on radio, television, Facebook, and other online modes of learning. And I will be with you throughout this episode. As a creative individual, we can use this season to build fresh challenges and approaches in the learning system. According to Albert Einstein, in the middle of difficulty lies a fortune. So stop being afraid of what can go wrong and start being positive of what can go right. This pandemic will never stop us learning. But before we start and dig deeper with our lesson, I just want to share some tips or reminders for you to follow. First, while watching this video, I expect you to listen attentively and see to it that you have your module. Second, check your speaker if you can hear me clearly. I also encourage you to jot down important concepts or ideas so it will help you to make learning easily especially in answering all the different learning tasks given in your module. I hope that this video and the module that you have will help you make learning more meaningful. Before you proceed, I must first discuss to you briefly about what you need to know. Look around you. Isn't it amazing that you are able to witness the beauty of the environment? Did you know that everything that you see is a matter? I know that you are already familiar with what matter is. It is anything that occupies a space, has a mass and volume. It is a chemical substance that can transform into another state. A chemical substance is a matter that has a definite composition and the same composition throughout. Everything in the universe is made up of smallest constituent unit of matter. To better understand this, we need to filter or figure out what those are at the very basic level. How it affects our lives, how can we affect it, and how it can be utilized to our benefit. Organizing and describing matter help us understand the diversity of it in the universe. Humans, plants, air, water, everything. These things are well classified, studied, and placed in the modern periodic table and have a well-defined number of them and are called elements of the modern periodic table. From this lesson, you will find out that substances may be further classified into two, the elements and compounds. Surely, you will understand how elements distinguish from compounds based on set of properties and you will be able to recognize the presence of these elements in different food labels as minerals. After going through this topic, you are expected to First, describe the characteristics of an element and compound. Second, Distinguish elements from compounds based on a set of properties. And third, classify substances as either element or compound. My dear students, I hope that the previous discussion about heterogeneous and homogeneous mixture is clear to you. If in case you feel hard to distinguish substances based on their appearances, do not worry. There are many ways to identify them because these substances may be classified and are made of different elements and compounds. Pure substances can be elements or compounds. Elements and compounds are all around us. Elements are made of atoms. Example, one atom of sodium or Na or a combination of two atoms of the same elements, example, two atoms of oxygen or O2 to form molecules of oxygen. Two atoms of the same elements form molecule. Compounds are made of molecules which consist of two or more atoms of different elements. An example is molecule of water or H2O. Charged atoms or molecules are called ions. 
Example of ion is salt or NaCl, wherein sodium element has a positive charged ion, which we call cation, and chlorine element has negative charge called an ion. Now let's visit the periodic table of elements. Its element is identified by its symbols placed at the middle of the square. The atomic number and atomic mass are also included. Chemical symbols are abbreviations of the name of the elements. Its elements in the periodic table has a name and a shorthand symbol of one or two letters. Instead of writing the full names, the given symbol for its element may be used. For instance, O is the symbol for oxygen and H for hydrogen. You will also notice that the periodic tables consist of several horizontal rows called the periods or series. There are seven periods which are designated as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. The elements belonging to the same periods have different properties. The first period contains the two lightest elements. These are the hydrogen and helium. The second and third period contains of eight elements each. The fourth and fifth have 18 elements, and the sixth and seventh consist of 32 elements each. Of these 32 elements, 15 are shown separately to make the periodic table more compact. The last two periods are called the inner transition elements. The lanthanide series is then called the rare earth elements and the actinide series the heavy rare earth elements. We have also 18 vertical columns in the periodic table. They are known as groups or families. Just as human family, members often have similar looks and traits. Members of element families have similar chemical properties. The heading of its group may be a number, the letter A or B. Group A elements are known as representative elements and group B are transition elements. Group A or family A are also known as representative elements. Its group may be labeled with family names. Group 1A elements are known as alkali metals. Group 2A is alkaline earth metals. Group 3A is aluminum group or boron group. Group 4A is carbon group. Group 5A is nitrogen group. Group 6A is halogen group. And group 7A and 8A is noble or inert gases. Elements in the same groups have similar properties or characteristics. Its element in the periodic table is made entirely from one type of atom. Its element is unique and no two elements have the same set of properties. Some are in the same state wherein they are the same as solid, liquid, and gaseous element. But still, they have different properties. Some examples of solid elements which are also regarded as metallic elements are iron, gold, and silver. Others are non-metals or there can be either liquid or gaseous elements. Example of liquid elements are mercury, bromine, gallium, indium, and argon. Some examples of gaseous elements are oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. There are elements that are metalloids, means they have both the characteristics of metals and non-metals, like boron, silicon, and germanium, and also all elements found in the zigzag line. All matter is made of elements that are fundamental substances that cannot be broken down by chemical means. An element is a substance that cannot be further reduced as to simple substances by ordinary processes. Okay students, I will show you some examples of elements or products where we can found them. We have carbon. Carbon is a non-metallic chemical element known by the symbol C. That is the fundamental building block of material in living organism and it's important to many industries. Carbon occurs in nature as nearly formed in diamond and graphite. 
It is also a major component of coal, petroleum, asphalt, limestone, and most materials made by plants and animals. The pencil core is made of carbon. Another is calcium. Its compounds are very common in the earth's grass. It is found in minerals like chalk, limestone, and marble. Calcium is also found in sour fruits and milk. We have also silver. The symbol is AG. It is white lustrous metallic element that conducts heat and electricity better than other metals. We usually found it in utensils. Next is iron. The symbol is Fe. It is magnetic, malleable, silvery white metallic elements. Ion is found in tools. Another is aluminum. The symbol is Al. The most abundant metallic element in the Earth's grass. It can be found in soft drinks can. Then we have the last sample. We have phosphorus. Its symbol is P. It is reactive non-metallic element that is important to living organism and has many industrial uses. We can found it in matchstick stuff. When two or more atoms of different elements chemically bonded to one another, it will form into a compound. The compounds are presented by two or more different symbols of elements which is also called formula. Examples are CO, CO2, and NH3. I will show you a model of some molecules of common compounds. We have here molecules of hydrogen, wherein two atoms are represented by two candies bonded together. Another is carbon dioxide molecules which is consists of one atom of carbon represented by yellow color candy at the middle and two atoms of oxygen which is represented by two red colored candies. Another example is compound of ammonia or NH3, which is composed of one atom of nitrogen represented by black colored candy at the middle and three atoms of hydrogen which is represented by three pink colored candies and they are bonded together. Last model is the molecule of water, which consists of two atoms of hydrogen represented by two blue colored candies and one atom of oxygen represented by green colored candy. Aside from that, we have also some examples of compounds found in some products. We have sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, a compound found in baking soda, acetic acid, CH3, COOH found in vinegar, sodium chloride, NaCl found in salt, and carbohydrates, C12, H22, O11 found in sugar. To supplement your knowledge about elements and compounds, we have here a simple things to do. We have a visitor from a central laboratory. She is Professor Elements, an expert in all the elements and compounds surrounding us. She knows how to deal with it, especially some lost elements and compounds surrounding us. But she needs our help in finding those elements and compounds as soon as possible to avoid leakage. While she is with us, please help her to make our compost free from chemical hazards. But how we can help her? Let's read the poem and use it as our guide in picking all the lost elements and compounds. I know that you're excited to help her. Let's go! Now, my dear students, let's read the poem and try to understand and analyze it. The Lost Element by J.P. Cadelem Balera The Lost Element by J.P. Cadelem Balera I think I was lost. My home is too far at any cost. I am tired finding home made of lead so that solar radiation will not anymore be spread. The heat from the sun makes me float like helium inside a balloon that makes it bloat. As I go far, 
I feel numb and bursting. Like a bullet powder made of potassium nitrate that make us shaking. I hope I can go home now. I feel my lungs did not function somehow. Hope oxygen will fill me completely before carbon dioxide will be mine totally. As I walk in the lonely road above the mountains, it is sad to see land mine of gold and copper be broken. This shows how the environment suffered much every day. Hope my home will be back with me again like a brand new day. My body is already in pain and drained with essential elements from water made up of hydrogen and oxygen. I want to quench my thirst soon to fast track the lost elements which is my home. After reading the poem, I think you are now ready to answer the questions given. What are the elements and compounds stated in the poem? Okay, the elements are lead, helium, potassium, oxygen, gold, copper, and hydrogen. And the compounds are potassium nitrate, KNO2, carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. In the poem, we identify different compounds. And in a set of compounds, it is composed of elements. Can you identify the elements found in the given set of compounds? So the elements found in compound potassium nitrate are one atom of potassium, one atom of nitrogen, and two atoms of oxygen. Then the compound of carbon dioxide is made of one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen. Water is made of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Can you name new metallic elements and set of compounds that is not found in the poem? So some examples of metallic elements that is not found in the poem are silver, iron, aluminum, and tin. We have also here some examples of compounds which is not mentioned in the poem. We have sodium chloride, calcium carbonate, sulfuric acid, and silica. This time, my dear students, you will be engaged and have your immersion as garbage collector. Inside the garbage bin, our words need to be thrown at the dump site. As a garbage collector, you need to save the following words that describe and show relationship with elements and compounds. Segregate them by placing it in the boxes. Now let's try it! So we're going to put the following words inside the box of elements. Let's put oxygen, one atom, and hydrogen. All of these words have relationship with elements. Then inside the box of compounds, let's put the following words. Water, two or more atom, and salt. All of these words have relationship with compounds. From this point, my dear students, I will going to cut our video lesson about recognizing substances as elements or compounds because we have only 30 minutes intended for this episode. Our lesson for today is good for one week. We have still another one week for the continuance of our lesson and this will be discussed to you virtually by teacher Aryan Joy Baligod Lumelay. I hope that this video will help you to have a total grasp or understanding about the lesson, especially in answering all the learning tasks given in your module. Now, my dear students, it's your turn to navigate and explore the different learning tasks given in your module. Just continue to be brave in facing the plethora or challenges amid this pandemic. Let us always keep the doors of learning open. If things never go back to normal, then now let's create a new normal and that's okay. Together, let's overcome the learning crisis we were already living and respond to the pandemic we're all facing. 
Again, good day my dear students and I hope that we have a meaningful learning today.